so we've got our base colour down now. Um, I've decided that I'm going to layer this one up. I've chosen five colours here. So we will be doing this one a little bit differently to what we did with our, our first little motive there. Okay, so once this is all, um, you know, you've got your base colour to where you're happy with it, we're going to start layering up our colours, starting with our lightest colour. And with colour pencil, that's that's always, just, it's the same recipe no matter what you're doing. You're always starting with your lightest colour and working up to your deepest colour. So I'm just going to come in here into the centre and with little strokes that's following the shape. Here I'm just going to flick in some colour. And I've decided that I want my darkest area, my shadow area, to be on the outside. So I will be applying my colours from this, this angle. Okay, so I'll just continue around. Just need to sharpen that tip a little bit. And now when you are in some really tight little areas, even though we're still applying our colour with a flick, it's a good thing just to go around the outer perimeter. Just to make sure that we have got all those little areas covered. And try to do this without turning it. It's very difficult for me. When I'm teaching my students, I'm always saying to them turn your paper to where you're comfortable because you will get a better stroke so this is a little more comfortable for me because as I said I do like to flick away it's probably best to flick away but um, it's it's not essential if you find it's easy for you to flick towards you then go ahead and do that but if you're just starting a lot of these things will be habit formed so if you did get into the habit of flicking away from yourself that, that would be you know, a good thing Now with my first colour, as you can see, I'm going approximately halfway. Just get my brush and get rid of some of that. Now I will just grab a piece of scrap paper and lay it over my other work so that my hand's not going on my page all the time. start these ones down here because it is, as I said, it is quite awkward for me to, to flick coming into myself so I'll do these ones here where I don't have to turn the page. <laughs> Remember it's just nice soft flicks, layer upon layer. And try and go in the direction also that um, your outline or your guidelines are giving you. So this is slightly curved, so I am flicking in a slightly curved manner. Again, I just need that point back on my pencil. Just extend those flicks up a little. edge just to make sure that that colour comes right to that edge. And with 
this one. Now remember we're not just colouring in making lines backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards because if we were to do that we're going to just get a solid lay down of colour and that's not what we want. We want that gradual effect. And as you can see where there are little spaces in between where this colour has been laid down <clears throat> as you layer up, that's where you'll get different values from the different colours that you are layering upon your base. You can get some really nice effects if you're doing um, like leaves or branches or fences, anything with that, that real texture to it, you get some really nice effects. And just make sure that that outline is this color is going to the outline rather and we'll do this last little bit here So I'll leave that colour there for now and we'll just we'll, I'll go on with the next step of what I would like to show you. So the next thing is I'd like to use my next value in colour and just come in and put a small amount, not going all the way like we did with the first one we went about um, two thirds of the way. With this we just want to put just a little bit on the edge just to deepen that edge area because we're actually going to come in with our blending fluid on this um, this layer this time. So we're almost laying down a wash just for the outer edge. Because we want the edge of this to be the deepest area. should be turning my work because I can see I'm getting some heavy lines here because my hand's not comfortable. So once again we just want that edge even on the larger areas. Remember to keep turning your pencil as you go, making sure you're keeping that nice point. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go back in now. <clears throat> just add that first colour again, just over what we've just applied down. We only need a little bit of it, so...
very, very relaxing. Okay, so now we'll need a clean paper stump. Some of our blending fluid. Now what we're going to do is blend this up into our um, base colour. So we will do that exactly as if it was a pencil by flicking that up. And that's mixing those two colours that we've just laid down in together as well. Now on these bigger areas I can actually come in and, and give that a nice blend around the edges with a little circular motion just to make sure we've got that nice and even. And while that paper is still a little bit damp as I was saying before, if you've got a bigger piece, it's nice to um, grab a clean cotton bud. Just while that's still got a little bit of dampness to it. It just does help blend those areas that are bigger. Although it's nice to use um, on the smaller areas too, I guess, but it's it definitely a lot quicker and easier. So we can see our colours building beautifully there. Okay. Should still be enough moisture in this tip. Yeah. Same thing, giving it a good blend round and round. Mixing those two colours we've just laid together. And on the smaller areas, we just need to be careful we don't take this up too far. Otherwise, we can cover the whole, um, air, you know, the whole little space very easily and very quickly. And then we won't have that contrast of light and dark. So easy does it. Now I am working a lot quicker than I normally would. But just for um, the sake of the video and time, I am trying to hurry this on a little bit and I, I strongly suggest you don't do that. And just remember, you know, it's not about how long this takes to do. It's, it's, it's enjoying the process of it all. And you know, you take your time with something, and you're going to enjoy the results of it a lot more than if you rush it. Hopefully, you'll end up with a piece that you'll be proud of for many years to come. Okay, so when I'm happy that that's blended enough, I can come in with my other colours now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, is start in with a darker brown. And this is all, uh, what's it, what is it? It's a nougat, so that doesn't really tell us much about the colour, is it? But here it is here. So it is a lot darker than any of the colours we've already put down, but it's still quite a light brown within the, the brown colour family. And I'm going to start just by outlining the very outer area. Now I like to oh, this goes my point. I like to do this when I am starting to apply the darker colours just so that I can visually see how much it is I actually need to put down. So once we start adding these colours to our paper, often a little bit 
goes a long way. We often need a lot less than what we initially think we do. I'll just start extending that and especially up the sides just a tiny bit down base in those corners on that side we definitely want to make sure we get some colour there as you can see it's really starting to take shape Keep that tiny point on your pencil. Scattering a very small amount at a time. It's always easy to add more and it's a lot harder to take it away. Don't be tempted to just colour it in. Just persist with the little flicks. I'll show me that excess. I do have a tiny little bit I've gone outside. I've just got a little electric eraser here. It's very handy just for those really tight spots. that up as we go. Now sometimes on these bigger areas it's also good just to sort of run around the perimeter and give yourself a few guidelines of the direction your strokes are to go in. So now when we've got enough of this colour laid down, we're actually going to go in with a dry paper stump. Or if you wanted you could use a little cotton tip. dry paper tip on paper stump here. Make sure there's no other colour on it. Just get that little 
very end of it. Okay, and so we're going to come in now, and this is a dry stump, and we're going to just blend that dry. Right over there, like so. And we're pulling it right up into that lighter area. Flicking it up into that light area and then really giving it a burnish down. As you're adding each layer, you can really see it taking on its shape. You can really see, oh, I've missed that, that one there. You can really see the dimension starting to happen. Just get rid of all that excess. You end up with too much colour on your tip, just give it a quick little sand off with your file. Okay, so the next thing I would be looking at doing would be bringing down some of my light colour again now and I'd just bring some of that down in all of these, um, all of these little sections that we've done and then with a clean stump give that a burnish in as well so that where these colours are intersecting and meeting at around about that halfway point you're going to get a nice transition there, a nice blend. So what I'll do is I'll stop the video, I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll bring all of these other pieces up to this same, um, same stage and I will come in and I'll add my lightest value back in. Okay, so it won't be a moment. Okay, so now we're back. As you can see, I've gone ahead, I have finished that last step and I've also gone ahead and brought this almost to completion. Now what I've done is basically exactly the same as what we were doing earlier with layering our colours and I've just gone ahead and layered up my last two colours, so my last two darkest colours. The other thing that I've done is when I was coming around, remember I was saying that we were going to be blending this light cream all the way around on the top parts of these, I've also gone around and gave it a slight very light shadow with our lightest colour. You remember this was our lightest colour when we started our base. So I've gone ahead and I've shaded in the top here just to give it a little shadow because even though this is the lighter side, it still will have a shadow because this is a rounded surface. So I'll just actually zoom in a little bit and just see if you can 
see it a little better. Okay, and let's just try this light on. I'm not sure if that's better or not. Okay, so the steps I've done, as I said earlier, I've gone around, I've blended my lightest base colour wash colour over these areas. I've gone ahead and added a shadow, a very light shadow with our lightest colour, and I've just blended that with a dry paper stump. You could use a cotton tip or whatever it is you have. Then I've gone with my second darkest colour and I've added another layer, making sure it's coming shorter of the previous layer I have laid down. I've done that all the way around and then I've come in with my darkest colour. Now with my darkest colour I have concentrated right on the outer edge of the image. I've also ran it up the sides of these segments, these little pieces that, that segregate all of these. I've ran up the side of those and played, paid particular attention in these areas here, these little corner areas where that would be tucking down and under. So I've really darkened and deepened all of those areas up. The last thing I did was I grabbed my dark grey and I've outlined right around the whole shape. I've also ran up the sides all the way, even up into the lighter area. I've brought my dark grey. Now remember, very fine lines, so our pencils do need to be sharp. I keep repeating myself, I know, but it's very important. So right up the sides there, very fine line. Just to distinguish, it just helps separate all of these elements within the design. Okay, so I've given that a nice um, blend with a cotton tip coming up and then with the clean side coming down. So we get a nice blend there. The only other thing I've done is added um, some value in these little areas here. Okay, so I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick this up and I don't think I can really zoom in that much more. It doesn't look that great when you zoom in, you can't really focus. But what I've done is, and this would probably be my last stage I would do, I would grab my Micron pens or any um, archival ink that pen that you would have. And here I'm using an O1 in a brown, a sepia and a 005 um, in a black. And what I would go ahead and do now with my black, and it is the finer one, the 005, just stipple in some little dots just on that very outer edge. This is really going to darken that, that edge and that's what is giving us our pop. Okay, and we can also just run in the direction of our uh, of the area, a couple of little dashed lines coming up into those different shades we have there. Then I would go ahead and do the same with the brown. Now this is slightly bigger, and I've chosen this brown. It's actually sepia because this piece is in browns. Now it will be a bit shiny when you first apply it, but once it's all dried, it will blend into that beautifully. Now when I do this, it's because I want to have that little bit of texture to, to my colour work. And once again, just pay more attention to the darker areas. That is where the colour will be more condensed. And we would do that to the whole piece and there we would have it. It would be all completed. So guys, look, I hope that um, these tutorials are helping you somewhat. Look, I do put a lot of time into, they take a lot of time to make these videos. I do enjoy it, but any feedback or comments you could give me 
um, whether you're enjoying these tutorials, if there's something you would like to learn in particular, please do leave a comment. They're very valued to me and it, it helps me to know what to do next and, and what it is that you're wanting. So I look forward to hearing from you and reading your comments and um, I also look forward to bringing you the next um, little piece in this uh, colour series. So thanks for joining me and I'll be talking to you and sharing with you again very soon. Bye now.